we also prioritize how we use that energy. So we'll always be drawing from the harvested energy first. Any excess energy, then we can feed off into storage. We can even feed it off into a battery and charge batteries if we need to. Our goal is really to remove the battery from an IoT solution. Hi, it's Aim with IP Exchange. We're at the Atmosic booth uh, with Nick, who's going to tell us about the um, ATM 33E series, which is uh, energy harvesting and BLE socks. So, um, yeah, what's um, what's the deal with these devices? So basically what we're doing here is we are changing the way a lot of people address standards-based communication. So in the majority of companies out there, some of which I've worked for, yeah. we look at the protocols, we work out what we're doing, we lower the, lower the power as best as we can. Okay. In the way that we're, our approach here is we do it the other way up. We, we, we do everything we can to get the power as low as possible, and then we work out where we can apply that in standards-based communications. So in this particular one we're looking at, this is the, the Bluetooth series, so it's the ATM2, the ATM3, and in this case the ATM33. Um, so, generally speaking, there's a lot of similarity with uh, a lot of other competitive solutions out there. It's a Bluetooth radio, it's a microcontroller, there's obviously the appropriate um, memories in there that is required. But we have a couple of little bits and pieces in here that bring in a fair bit of uniqueness. One, of course, is the built-in energy management side of things. Okay. Uh, another aspect of it is the sensor hub and what, what we're doing there. Um, but, but, you know, most people will know us for what we're doing on the energy management side of things because what that whole block is about is a very efficient mechanism to pull in and manage any energy we can get from motion, from thermal, from uh, RF. You know, we have a built-in okay. RF harvester. Um, I'm, I'm missing one. Which one did I miss? PV, solar, the big uh, one. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> the big one. Um, um, and basically what we're doing here is because it's a, only a single conversion, we can use that um, power directly. Uh, a lot of other solutions, which may have an external energy management system, they will take that in and they'll put it into storage and then they'll pull it out of storage to use it, right? Oh, nice, so you're, yeah. you're cutting out the middleman. Yeah, absolutely, yes. effectively, yes. So, um, but we can also configure this to be uh, optimized for the type of energy harvesting we're going to do. So in low light conditions, we can dial this in so that you get a more efficient output from the um, the solar. In high levels of light, we can do the opposite thing. We also prioritize how we use that energy. So we'll always be drawing from the harvested energy first. Any excess energy, then we can feed off into storage. We can even feed it off into a battery and charge batteries if we need to. But when we're taking it, energy first from the harvested source, then from any stored, then from any battery. Our goal is really to remove the battery from an IoT solution because there's about 100 batteries a second end up in landfill for, um, uh, you know, yeah. from IoT. And it's only going to get worse, uh, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, I've, re I've read some hor yeah. horrifying statistics on, uh, absolutely. On, on IoT. So this, it sounds, this sounds great as a green product. Yeah. And, um, well, that's our goal. Yeah. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, so what, what do you think the kind of the sweet spot of the, the applications for these kind of devices would be? Oh, the applications are all over the show, to be honest. Uh, as we move more into IoT, it gets broader and broader and broader. Uh, our focus, um, since we started, we were very much into the user experience devices, which is uh, things like TV remote controls. You'll, you'll see that uh, there's a lot of remote controls nowadays that are drawing the energy in from energy harvesting. Um, we're looking to expand what we do in keyboards and mice. Okay, yeah. um, But beacons are becoming a huge thing. People want it in asset tracking uh, applications because you throw these, these fleets of devices out there and theoretically you should never need them again, never see them again, mm. but you don't want them to be running out of power. Yes. So energy harvesting obviously fits for those. Um, you know, most people, particularly in Europe, are used to the electronic shelf label business. Um, gone are the days where you used to put a price on every device with a, a, a gun. Price gun. Yeah. Oh, I remember those good yeah, days. I, I think I've done it. Yeah, <laughs> um, but what we're doing now is we're putting e-ink displays in okay, front. Nice. Right? Yeah. Once you've written to an e-ink display, it never uses any power, but mm. we can be still absorbing the power yes. from whatever mechanism we're using. Now that as well, particularly in the case of Bluetooth, we can play with customer loyalty programs um, okay. because you can use other technologies from Bluetooth, such as angle of arrival technologies, 
where you start to know where the person is. Um, if they're in a customer loyalty program, you can take them to where they want, but you kind of know that this is the thing they want on the way, and you Aww. can provide them yeah. deals and things like that. So I want, I want my chocolate bar, but I also want kitchen roll. It'll walk you around the correct way because of your, the profile you've developed yourself over time. And so this is where the energies are, uh, sorry, the technologies are all starting to come together. But again, all of these technologies use power. Mm. All of these technologies lead to landfill. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what we're trying to avoid. Cool, well, that's, that's a very good mission. Um, let's hear a little bit more about the sense hub and the peripherals in yeah. the chip. So when you, when you actually look at uh, an SOC, there's a mm. couple of things that use a lot of power, right? When, yeah. you're, when you're doing a lot of transmitting, you use a lot of power. But you're not always transmitting. That's not a big problem. When you're always listening, you're using a lot of power, but you're not always listening. You're, you're duty cycling the radio. But one of the other things that people forget about is the actual microcontroller itself. Mm. The microcontroller uses quite a, bit of, quite a bit of power in the scale of things. Yeah. But what we do here is on the first time this device ever turns on, this guy can configure the sensor hub. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. So what the sensor hub can, can do is it can monitor the various inputs to the device. And you know, you, you might have a leak sensor as a, an example, yeah. right? Or a, or a heat sensor, you look, use that for the example. So we might be tracking that. So the idea is the sensor hub can write straight to memory and get the logs if it wants to. But what it also will allow us to do is it allow us to set various limits. So if things get too hot or too cold in, in this application, yeah, yeah. the sensor hub can actually transmit directly without waking up the the microcontroller. Oh, nice. So you're right? even more energy efficient. That's correct. Nice. We know what we want to do. We don't really need to do any processing around mm. it. We just have an alert. We need to send it to that guy. There, we, there we're shortcutting the entire radio, uh, so the entire microcontroller side of things to do that. Oh, nice. That's, so you really, you've got a chip that really does what it, it needs to do in the best way possible. It doesn't ever use parts that don't need to actually be used, it seems. Well, that's the goal, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it, and well, the goal is to save yeah. the battery power. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but the all these little tricks allow yeah. us to do that. And obviously there's design things we've done just mm. at the chip level itself, not, mm. not, not at the feature level, at yeah. the chip level itself to reduce power. Oh, yeah. excellent. So um, if uh, a design engineer was looking to um, evaluate this technology, what, what would be the best way to go about it? Do you have some development boards or some reference designs that they can We do. We have evaluation kits. Um, you can join one of our distributor partners. Um, Mauser is one of those guys, okay. so that's a, a very good place to get evaluation kits. Um, obviously, we're available around the world. We've got sales offices, designs offices, and so forth, oh, so nice. we ourselves are available. There is the website, of course, <laughs> and all that information is available there as well. But yeah, we certainly also have uh, products that people can look at, which are existing products in the market today. Cool. Do you have any examples that yeah, you'd, you'd figure to share? Over in the, in the cupboard that we can show you if you wish. Cool. So what you can see in this cupboard here is you can see a number of uh, customer products, a couple of evaluation kits, a couple of reference designs, but I'll give you a quick introduction to many of these things. So you can see here at the bottom, um, you can see an example by a, one of our customers called Targus. Okay. They announced this at CES this year that is the um, eco-friendly um, keyboards and mice and so forth that they have. Um, I believe it's about 85% recycled materials. Oh, um, yeah. Wow. Um, in, including the plastics, of course, here, which which are all recycled bottles, if you will. Um, we have the whole keyboard is actually taken care of by our silicon. Um, moving forward here, you can see this is actually one of our reference designs, which is a mouse product. Um, this one is using the ATM2 series, I believe. Um, moving up. Obviously, re remote controls are a key thing to what we do today. Yeah. Um, it, it, this is probably the thing that most people know us for already. Um, but these are a good example and a way to introduce, of course, the various PV technologies. Mm. So we have a number of partners, um, much of their products you can see here. Um, what is very different from PV products of the past is if you think about your calculators that you had during school, you have, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. You have that little glass square in the corner. Mm which really wasn't very uh, visually nice, yes. right? Yeah. Um, products today, people are looking for this solar cell or the PV cell not to really be a visible or a key part of the yeah. design. So now you can actually print a lot of these cells okay. in the shape that you want them to be. 
So um, in, in this screen here, you can see things like uh, headbands for headphones. You can also see in products down here where you can see that the, the we've actually got them slightly brighter than they should be, but you can see where the, in this second one here, where the cell is almost the same color yeah. as the plastics itself. We do a lot of things in the medical space for con continuous glucose meters. Um, you, you can't tell from this, but this yeah. is a continuous glucose meter. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Um, even things like cycle computers, which are... Oh, yeah, know, yeah, you know, yeah. The, 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 the little transducers on those are probably flat on most bikes, but yeah. in this case, that, that helps. Moving up to the top shelf, you see a lot of asset trackers. Um, th this is also in the coal chain uh, farming industry. A lot of trackers are used there. Okay. Um, and as we mentioned at the table a moment ago, uh, things like electronic shelf labels, which are popping up all over the all over the place because of how, how things are making life easier. In the back, you can actually see one of our. Um, uh, evaluation kits for angle of arrival, the Bluetooth technology oh, okay, we we're talking yes, about. Yes. So this yeah. is using multiple antennas to kind of mm. work out where the devices are. And so we obviously support the various RTLS, real-time real location systems, uh, protocols that are available from Bluetooth today. Cool. Well, certainly very interesting technology, very applicable, very applicable to current trends of getting stuff carbon neutral, batteryless. Um, fantastic, uh, fantastic to talk to you. Um, at the end of these kind of interviews at such big shows, I like to ask um, how you're finding it because, I mean, Embedded World, one of the biggest shows uh, in Europe in, in the year. So, um, yeah, how's it been for you this year? Uh, actually, we, we were very surprised just how many big brands were seeking us out. Um, always which is always a good always sign, a good yeah. <laughs> and all of them are coming with looking for the sustainability uh, discussion. They want to understand how they can make their companies more sustainable. A lot of big brands nowadays are actually using that to position themselves. Um, and so this, is, this has helped. Um, after sustainability, they're wanting to know about the technology and so forth. And, and you know, the, the thing about price, which was the, the thing that always used to lead, oh, yeah, yeah. those discussions are not the first thing they want to know about. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they bring it up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah they will. <laughs> Every, everyone but, but always it's does. An, it's not yeah. the most important thing that they want to learn uh, because okay. Bluetooth chips are Bluetooth chips are Bluetooth chip. This mm. is a differentiation. Nice. It's a disruptor. Cool. Yeah. Well, I think that's a great to no uh, note to end on. We love disruptive <laughs> technology at yep. Hyper Exchange. Thank you for your time. Yeah, and we for uh, I look forward to um, uh, reading more about your other products and um, writing more about your other products. Very good. Thanks well, again. Thank you. Well, that was a very interesting interview with Atmosic. It's kind of combined half of the technologies we've already talked about all into one device. Energy harvesting, Bluetooth, MCU. Pretty incredible, really. If you'd like to learn more, check out the link in the description to the IP Exchange website.